Hi friends, hope you guys doing good and revising well for your exams. So this video is all about your surgery special where we have picked around 10 important topics which are your favorite of AIMS examiners. So what we'll be doing is that we'll be discussing the specific points of those topics rather than having a detailed discussion, right? So this is going to help you to revise faster. So without wasting time, let's begin our discussion. So the first question that I have is regarding your OS MRS code. So what is your OS MRS code? This stands for your obesity surgery mortality risk score. Now the questions that are framed from here is that which of the following is or are not the component of your OS MRS score. So to answer that we would be needing to know the components. So the components includes first age which is more than 45 years. Then we have BMI. What is BMI? Body mass index right more than 50 kg per meter square. Then we have gender. Now here it is your male gender. Then we have hypertension and the last component is DVT that is your deep venous thrombosis or any risk factor for your pulmonary embolism. So these are your few components of your OS MRS score. Now the next question that we have is on Haggett classification. So Haggett classification is a very important topic right. So this is the classification used for your polyps. So if you see over here I have taken your diagram from one of the standard textbooks of GI. So first we have your pedunculated adenoma right. So this, I, this is your classification for pedunculated polyps. So over here level 0. So what do you understand by level 0? That means it is not invasive carcinoma. Then level 1. So what is level 1? It is the invasion to the head of the pedunculated polyp. So if you see over here, this is invasion into the head of your pedunculated polyp. Then you have your level 2. So level 2 is your invasion up to the neck of the polyp. Then we have the level 3 which is invasion into the stalk of the polyp and level 4 is your invasion into the base of the pedunculated polyp. Right. So if you see over here the questions that can be framed is by giving you a diagram and asking you which it belongs to which of the level and then they could actually give you a detailed description that there is a patient of 45 year old presenting to you with the polyp and you find that there is an invasion into the stock of the pedunculated polyp. So what is the level of your Haggett classification? Now when it comes down to your sessile adenomas, please remember that all lesions are level 4. So another important differentiating point over here is that you guys need to remember is your pedunculated adenoma and your sessile adenoma. So Haggett classification changes when it comes down to pedunculated versus sessile. Right? Now moving down to the next question, the staging laparoscopy in pancreatic cancer. So it is done in cases of high risk of occult disease. So what are those cases? Large tumors. Now the question that is framed from here is they ask you the tumor size. What is the cutoff for the staging laparoscopy? Friends remember it is more than 3 cm. Now the next question that is framed from here is your elevated CA199 levels. So what is the value of CA199 that is raised which signifies or indicates that we should go for your staging laparoscopy in pancreatic cancer. Yes, it is more than 100 units per litre. 
that uncertain findings on CT or body or tail tumor. So, this are your few of the indications or rather the indications of your staging laparoscopy in pancreatic cancer. Right. Now, moving down to a fourth important point gastric cancer classification now there are a lot of gastric cancer classification but i'll be discussing today in this video the most important that is your lauren classification for your gastric cancer now the importance cannot be explained please expect at least a question coming from this important table so lauren divided the gastric cancer into two parts which is your intestinal and diffuse so, what are your differentiating features of your intestinal and diffuse? Intestinal is environment risk factors and diffuse has your familial risk factor. Then other risk factors include your gastric atrophy and intestinal metaplasia and blood type A in case of diffuse. Intestinal is much more common in men compared to women whereas diffuse is much more common in women. Then you have your increasing incidence with the age in case of intestinal whereas it is seen in younger age group in case of your diffuse gastric cancer then your histology usually has your gland formation in intestinal gastric cancer whereas in case of diffuse you find your signet ring cells and which are usually poorly differentiated then the mode of spread that is hematogenous intestinal whereas it is transmural and lymphatic spread in diffuse gastric cancer now this is your most potential question that can be asked right the microsatellite instability and apc gene mutations are seen in your intestinal gastric cancer whereas your decreased e catherine is seen in your diffuse gastric cancer so the questions can that can be framed are which of the following is not a feature of intestinal gastric cancer they might give you an option decreased e catherine please remember decreased e catherine is a feature of your diffuse gastric cancer and p53 and p16 inactivation is seen in both now in addition to all these points i would like to add one more point which is seen in uh, your h pylori right so please remember intestinal gastric cancer has your association with your h pylori usually seen in your distal part whereas your diffuse gastric cancer is usually seen in your proximal part right now moving on to the next topic that is your familial adenomatosis polyposis so the mode of inheritance is your autosomal dominant the gene involved is your APC gene now where is it located it is located on long arm of chromosome 5 then what is the number of colonic adenomas which makes it diagnostic for familial adenomatosis polyposis so it is more than 100 then how do you prevent colorectal cancer in this so prophylactic surgery is the way that you prevent your colorectal cancer in case of your familial adenomatous polyposis now the another important question that is asked is regarding your extra colonic manifestation so what they do over here is they might just ask in form of two ways which of the following is an extra colonic manifestation or which of the following is not an extra colonic manifestation or the another way of asking is which of the following is the endodermal derivative uh, of the extra colonic manifestation so first let's discuss your endodermal derivatives so your endodermal derivatives include your adenoma or carcinoma 
majorly around your duodenal ampulla right and this may also be present near your stomach then near your thyroid and biliary tree then we have your hepato blastoma and your next uh, endodermal derivative is your gastric fundic polyp right now your ectodermal derivatives include your epidermoid cyst then it includes your pilomatrixoma then it includes your congenital hypertrophy of retinal pigment epithelium which is also known as your short form chrpe right and then we have your mesodermal derivatives which includes your desmoid tumors then you have your osteomas and you have your dental problems right so this are your extracolonic manifestation of your familial adenomatosis polyposis now the next uh, topic that we are going to discuss is the solitary rectal ulcer syndrome right so where is it present the location anterior wall of rectum or the posterior wall of the rectum so that gives you one of the most important questions so it is situated in your anterior wall of the rectum usually 6 to 8 cm from the anal verge we confirm the diagnosis by your histology and you have your treatment options treatment option is your star procedure so what is your star procedure now this is your trans this is your, your trans anal staple resection of interception right and your another treatment that can be done is your resuspension of the rectum right how do we do that by your abdominal rectopexy so they will usually give you in the option the star procedure so the important points for your srus is anterior wall 6 to 8 cm from anal verge confirmed by histology and star is one of your treatment options of your solitary rectal ulcer syndrome right now the next important topic is your congenital adrenal hyperplasia so the mode of inheritance is your autosomal recessive the pathognomonic features in children is your adrenal insufficiency right and very lization now the important question asked from this topic is the most frequent effect that we see is your 21 hydroxylase deficiency right now moving on to the next question is your venous drainage of adrenal now it is a very simple question but yet it can be confusing so on the right side it is draining into your inferior vena cava now on the left side it is draining into your left renal vein now what is the importance of discussing this question 
Number one, you might get a direct vein liner. But now, in case of adrenal disorders, there is a concept of your adrenal vein sampling. So, they might give you a concept based question over here that you want to do an adrenal vein sampling of your left side. So, how would you proceed for it? Please remember, it is via your left renal vein in case of your left adrenal vein now in case of your right side it would be by your inferior vein okay well, that you would be able to reach your right sided adrenal vein right so this is a small topic but yet it can be used on the basis of your concepts of your surgical anatomy linking to your diagnostic methods of your adrenal vein sampling now medullary thyroid carcinoma so this are your tumors of your para follicular cells derived from neural crest now diarrhea is seen in around 30% of cases now this is due to 5-hydroxy tryptamine which I am already mentioned over here right now the involvement of your lymph nodes is seen in around your 55 to 60 percent of your cases now genetic screening is done in all cases of medullary thyroid carcinoma my dear friends this is a wrong statement now this are usually done in your suspected familial cases right when you suspect men syndrome because medullary thyroid carcinoma has association with your multiple endocrine neoplasia right now can anybody say me which is the type yes it is type now so please remember not done in all cases not done in all cases now they have high levels of calcitonin and carcinogenic embryonic antigen now this is a line which I have not taken uh, from your Bailey and Love, rather these are lines of your Sabastan. But then, this are your current American Thyroid Association guideline, which is for your prophylactic, ipsilateral and contralateral neck dissection based on your serum calcitonin levels. Now, I have mentioned this because this has been a recent addition in your Sabastan and they can actually give you a true or false statement stating that the prophylactic neck dissection is based on your serum calcitonin levels which you would be marking as false. No, my friends, this is a true statement because if there are ipsilateral neck nodes on USG, prophylactic contralateral node dissection can be done if your basal serum uh, calcitonin level is at least 200 picogram per milliliter All right now coming down to the last topic that is your Barrett's esophagus which is your columnar metaplasia now I would want you to remember one important chart which has been recently added in your Bailey and Love and regarding your Seattle protocol what it is four quadrant random biopsies every two centimeter in addition to the targeted biopsy now this is your table which I would want you all to remember for managing Barrett's esophagus a flat columnar mucosa you do a systemic cold biopsy which is confirmed dysplasia by two independent pathologies now if there is no dysplasia right then you repeat OGD every three years now if the maximum length is less than three centimeter a gastric metaplasia repeat OGD now if length is less than three centimeter and gastric metaplasia consider discharging whereas on repeat if you find intestinal metaplasia then you need to repeat your OGD that is every three to five years 
if it is more than 3 cm the maximum length then you got to repeat as every 2 to 3 years. Now if it is indefinite for displacia you would repeat your OGD with maximal acid separation. So this is an important concept you need to repeat with your maximal acid suppression. Now if it is a definite displacia then you follow the chart whether it is a low grade displacia or the high grade displacia. Now if it is a low grade displacia you need to do a OGD every 6 months. Now if two consecutive evidence of non dysplastic barrier esophagus we follow the non dysplasia flow chart. But now please remember when if it is a high grade dysplasia you need to go for an MDT discussion that would require a therapeutic intervention which could be in form of your endoscopic eradication therapy. So this were your few important topics that is your special 10 topics. So I will just run through this topics once again. So first you have your OS MRS score, then you have your Haggard classification, the staging laparoscopy in pancreatic cancer, the gastric cancer classification specifically your Lorne classification, your familial adenomatosis, polyposis, then you have your solitary rectal ulcer syndrome, congenital adrenal hyperplasia, venous drainage of adrenal, medullary thyroid carcinoma and your Barrett's esophagus. So this does not at all imply that you would not revise your other important topics. Yes, you should be revising them but then give a special focus on this 10 special topics. So all the best for your exams. I'm pretty sure you guys will do well. So just keep revising, keep revising because that is your ultimate key to success. So signing off for this video. Thank you.